Everybody has negative cash flow because they bought it, you know, Didn't expecting, right. exactly, yeah. exactly. So I always encourage people who tell me that they're going to do fix and flip to first do fix and rent. Buy a house that once it's fixed up, it will work as a rental. Uh -huh. And manage the process. Make sure you fully understand how you're going to have cost overruns and you're going to have budget overruns. And if you were to make it a fix and flip at the point that you're ready to, would you have made money? Mm -hmm. Put it in as a rental. If the answer is yes, that you would have made money, now go out in the real world and do fix and flip. If it doesn't, you still didn't lose because you have a, a long-term asset that's going to perform a cash flow for you. Yeah. There's no excuse, for, no substitute for experience. None. <laughs> Darn. <laughs> but education is important yeah. too. And I find so often that people will read a book and think from a book that they have all the education that they need, and then they go out and they buy and try and do fix and flip. The best way that you can learn this is to partner with somebody that's done it in the past mm -hmm. and then move forward and move out on your own from that. Or to even pay for seminars. A lot of people are against seminars, but quite honestly, they're good. They now, can be helpful, yeah. They can. Think of it this way. If you needed to have brain surgery, would you want your surgeon to have attended a few hands-on classes mm -hmm. and some training? Yeah. Or do you want them to learn how to do it by reading a book? Uh -huh. Well, when you're dealing with money, financial money with houses and the price that they are, it's almost like dealing with brain surgery on a person's pocketbook. So you have to be wise and you have to have education. Yeah. And there's some people that will also, they'll be like mentors in this area. I Absolutely, there so, are. And that's a little bit like you were talking about that you can sort of partner maybe with these people and then they can sort of show you the ropes as far as how it works and then after you do a few, then you, you have the idea of how it all works together. That's yeah. correct. Yeah. That's correct. And the last area, and again, we're not going to get into depth in this, but uh, is the REO investing. So but let's just talk a little bit about some advantages and disadvantages very quickly. Sure. When we talk REO investing, we're talking bulk REOs. So you're buying a bulk package, which might be 10 homes. Now, again, this is for closed properties, folks. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, 10 properties, they're, they're going to be in the Midwest. You're not going to see them on the West Coast because the prices are are a little bit uh, out of whack here for okay. this. But you're going to buy the homes. They're going to be bottom of the barrel type homes. We're not buying cream of the crop. We don't do any rehab, but we sell them out to people who live in the neighborhoods with seller financing. So we provide the financing for them to move in with minimal down payments, and their real down payment is sweat equity. And so they get to have home ownership in a market when the financing isn't there for most normal people to even own a home. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now we're going to ask this nice broad question. Um, and so, but, you know, take it for what it's worth. But what due diligence needs to be done? Maybe, maybe we should just say people need to be aware that there's due diligence that needs <laughs> to be done. So let's why don't you sort of take it from there. Yeah. So obviously, if you're investing money in a piece of real estate, you need to understand that there's going to be inspections that you're going to do. There's going to be potential areas that this piece of property could cause hazard to your finances. So you want to research every area that would do that and mitigate the risk. That's how, that's how we make money is by mitigating risk. So the first thing you want to do is look at your contract. Make sure that the contract you have allows you to get out if you do a property inspection and you don't like the results. You're going to get property inspections, termite inspections, and then you're going to have a title company typically close this for you. And the title company will research the title to see if there's any defects. See if maybe this was a house that was supposed to go to an error because it was in probate, but somebody else didn't record something. You don't want to later find out after you've spent money fixing it up or putting a tenant in that you don't even own the property. So that's why you would close with a title company. They'll find those defects for you. So the main things for you as a buyer going through the normal process is you're going to go to title. You're going to do an inspection on the property, termite inspection, roof inspection, chimney inspection, foundation inspection. Um, and then the, the real estate agents that you're working with, they'll do a hazard inspection for you so you know if it's, you know, um, in a flood zone or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. 
Now, um, what about liens and that sort of stuff? Is that going to show up in the title search? It will. So if you close with a title company, those will show up and you'll be alerted there. If you don't close with a title company, then you'll need to make a trip to the courthouse or a call to the courthouse to find out if there's any mechanic liens, any tax liens, IRS liens. Um, How about a first mortgage? First mortgage, second mortgage, <laughs> third mortgage. You know, in the heydays, we were up to third mortgages. Oh my so. Gosh. Yes, you definitely want to research all that. Now, another piece that a lot of people forget about if they're paying cash for a property is property insurance. Yes. If you're getting a mortgage, you're not going to forget because the mortgage is going to require that Absolutely. you have that. But if you're paying cash for it, the minute you sign that document, you own that house. So you want to make sure that you've set up your property hazard insurance and your liability insurance on that property. Okay, we have just a couple minutes left. Um, is this a good business to do as a Lone Ranger? I do it all myself. Absolutely not. Um, you need to have professionals surrounding you and you need to have other people who are in the real estate business to help you problem solve because you're going to hit things that you've never encountered where other people have and so you can pull on their experience. Join ARIA, a real estate investment club, you know, talk to your CPA and your attorney and ask them for referrals to people that might help you with repairs or inspections. And, you know, work with professionals like real estate agents to help you get into the right properties. Yeah. So I found, um, although now I'm starting to work more, again, with our Real Estate Investment Association, uh, but um, having some connections with real estate brokers, especially some that are doing property management, is really helpful for getting those uh, referrals for things like roof repairs and floor repairs and uh, uh, bathroom type things and so forth, or plumbing. Uh, so those are all, you know, it's good to have people that have those connections. And Absolutely. Can help you. Because it's like your own built-in Angie's list. You know, yeah. you, you know, you go, you, you ask, hey, does anyone know anyone that can put in pipes on my house? Or, you know, and then you find out what they paid for it, and it gives you a negotiation tool when you call people too. Right. So anyway, so we don't want to go in blind as much as possible, and it, it's good to have uh, those references. Uh, and some of the reference services, I guess I should throw this out as well, is bear in mind that some people are paying to be on those reference lists, so that doesn't necessarily mean that, uh, that people are, are really thrilled with the service. It, maybe that somebody's paid to be there. That's correct. Yeah. And that's why, you know, working with local people, like part of the, the real estate club, you're going to work with people who actually had the service performed. They're not being paid as spokespeople or as referrers, and you're going to get the true story. They might say, you did a great job. He didn't clean up the backyard, but he still was the cheapest. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's what you want. Okay. Lori, we're all out of time. Great. So I want to thank you so much for thank being with you. me today. Maybe we'll do another interview sometime. Folks, uh, consider these real estate alternatives. Think about it. Uh, do some studying. And I hope you can join us next time on Financial Insider Weekly.